Bachelor Center. And we've got this um, dog that's like a beagle cross that has, is he full, full beagle? Yeah. Full beagle. And he's got what looks like a mass in his ear canal. So this is all swelling right in here. He's got total stenosis of the canal because we can't even get the scissors down there. Really severe chronic otitis externa. And unfortunately, um, we wanted to do an MRI on this guy, but um, uh, the owners really, like, really couldn't afford to, um, to do that. And so, can I get um, Gelpies, please? Um, and so we're doing a total ear canal ablation, and I'm going to have to dissect this mass out as well. If you haven't already, uh, kind of medium. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications so that you'll get a ding on your phone the next time we live stream. So this should be a somewhat challenging um, total ear canal ablation. Um, it already has facial nerve palsy. Um, it has no evidence of vestibular signs. Again, they tried to um, do an otoscopic examination, but the ear canal was completely occluded. Um, and so, yeah, this would be interesting. And then helping us out today, we've got Juliana, who is our senior surgical intern, and we have Fee on the front end doing anesthesia and surgical nurse circulating. I just did an interesting case, um, which was a spinal cord tumor in a dog that uh, presented with neck pain and maybe some um, subtle neurologic deficits. An MRI revealed a large tumor, uh, well, large relatively speaking, dorsal and slightly to the left of the cervical spinal cord in the body of C2. And so we had to do a dorsal approach, almost like a hemilaminectomy, to get in there and get that um, tumor out. And um, I was going to live stream it, um, but then decided that it was really a bit too much, like too much uncertainty as far as the outcome was concerned. And so I didn't, but I was going to stream it just for the team here so they could see what I was doing. And my camera stopped working. And so I was very happy to see that I was able to get it running again for this procedure. So going through parotid salivary gland here, you've got some inclusion cysts right there. It is a bit warm in here, yeah. yeah. And then I had the suggestion that we introduce the other people that are in the theater. And I offered to put a GoPro in here as another camera so you could see everybody in the theater, but that got voted down, sadly. I think that Juliana doesn't want to know the answer to that question because you know everybody's going to say they would love to see what is going on in the theater. So this is really interesting. I'm getting a bunch of this kind of caseated stuff coming out here. So that's like purulent. So I will ask, would you guys like me to have a GoPro that shows the whole surgical theater as a kind of a picture-in-picture -picture kind of thing? I mean, I know I don't need to ask the question because everybody's going to say yes. So then I have to decide what to do with that information. <laughs> well, now. No, they would love to have that um, <laughs> increased access and... So look at that, all this case stuff. So this might not be a tumor. It might just be... 
not even absolutely. Look at this. Oh my God. So it's just a bunch of little caseated kind of pustules all over the place. Very interesting. Someone's asked, do you think the palsy will improve after, after surgery or is there still potential of it worsening? Uh, so the palsy cannot get any worse because he has complete facial nerve palsy right now. Um, but it, it, depending on if the facial nerve is kind of incorporated in the mass, um, it may not recover. But the, the owner, I don't even think the owner knew that the dog had facial nerve palsy. He kind of implied that there was maybe a little bit of, um, of droopiness or, or hypersalivation on that side of the face. I'll go ahead and take that out. So this is one of the worst years that we've seen. Okay, so there's more purulent material. It's kind of squirting out there. Quite annoying that Juliana is leaving us because she is such a good assistant on these. And <laughs> knows to anticipate everything that I need and stuff. And then two more, two more months, but when she trains them and then they leave and go somewhere else. One day, hopefully, she'll come back. Yeah. <laughs> In what role? Teen, staff surgeon? <laughs> And I find on these that if you really take your time at the beginning here to get your dissection planes right, you really save time in the end. And it's interesting, I have a few friends that are ear, nose, and throat surgeons human and there's no analogous procedure in humans it's just not not done and I think you know I imagine that it's because people don't get the extent of ear canal disease that primarily dogs do Did I get any responses to the question about whether people would like a GoPro in the room? Or are you just ignoring them, Juliana? <laughs> have you done this surgery on a cat? I have done many in cats. And that prompts us to discuss a little bit um, ear canal tumors. and. Um, so the most common tumor that we see in the ear canal of dogs and cats probably is serumenous gland adenocarcinoma. Um, and surgery in the form of a total ear canal ablation can or has a reasonable chance of being curative. Median survival time is something like four years um, in cats and dogs. So there were two studies that were done um, at the same time by the same surgeon, one in dogs, one in cats at Animal Medical Center in New York City. And they found that the survival time with total ear canal ablation for, can I get some more towel clamps please? Um, for dogs and for cats was four years with total ear canal ablation and was only about a year and a half with less aggressive surgery. So this is a much bloodier um, total ear canal ablation than I'm used to having. 
because of the, the size of this map and the extent of the dissection that I'm having to do to get around the whole thing. Plus it's a very vascular um, ear canal because of all the chronic inflammation that we have. Taking my time to establish this initial plane of dissection. So Juliana, I can see that you're shy about the YouTube channel. Do you put Instagram and TikTok videos online? Not at all? No. I have it, but I, I don't post. You have or you haven't? I have it, but I don't post anything. Right. And Fee, do you post? YouTube or Instagram videos? Um, I do. So why are you shy about this? Um, <laughs> it's just different. <laughs> I mean, it's like, sometimes it's like you're being under pressure. Yeah. But, I mean, I probably wouldn't. I'd probably get used to it. I mean, like, because I've done, like, videos and stuff for the clinic and... It's really adhered here. So this is a really challenging total ear canal ablation. And I like bloodless surgery. Whenever I have more blood than I'm used to, I don't like it. I know I'm spoiled, but I would not even attempt this without electric cautery. Like if our, if our electric cautery was broken, I would delay the surgery. Gosh, this is just so adhered. Um, so you can't just do a total ear canal ablation. You always have to do the tikaboo, which is the bull osteotomy, because if you just take out the ear canal, you're not uh, allowing an access for drainage of the um, wax out of the ear. And so if you just did a tika, you're always going to get an abscess formation, un yeah, unless you take out that bulla. So it really is not an option to do just a tika. There's a few people saying I'd like a GoPro. <laughs> GoPro. Yeah. Seeing prep would be interesting. Um, and then someone said, what is the setting of the cautery in Zika? Um, so I have my cautery set at 30 and 30. Um, and those numbers, I, I'm not sure if they are watts or joules or whatever, but it's kind of arbitrary. Basically, you set it so that the cautery does what you want it to. Um, and if you're getting too much 
smoke and whatever, then you turn it down. I don't think that this is a tumor. I think it's all just these pustules. Um, someone else said, we just need a little bit of the drug in anyway. Access All Areas YouTube channel. <laughs> this is disgusting. So that's cartilage right there. Okay, now we're making a bit of progress here. It's the best kind of tikka because the facial nerves are already paralyzed. I guess, other than the fact that it's like one of the hardest tikas I've ever done. <laughs> it's just so hard to get in there. And serminous glenadocarcinomas are almost always completely enclosed within the um, ear canal, so you don't even see the tumor in surgery. I've done a few in cats that have had squamous cell carcinomas, which are highly invasive, and those are really challenging. To admit I am kind of excited to see what's going to be inside the bulla. Can't even tell what's ear canal and what's mass and so it's just, we're just getting this discharge. It's almost like it's cellulitis rather than a tumor. hoping it will release once we get deeper and kind of pass this caseated mess. So that's all parotid salivary gland here. I wonder if I can get underneath that. This was a gift from Stephanie Burback in California. Not that you guys need to feel pressure to send me gifts, but my address is 70 Blackburn Road in Mount Wa or in Glen Waverly. Glen Waverly. <laughs> 
for anyone who hasn't seen on his scrub cap, it says, it's fine, I'm fine, everything's fine. And what is, what's on there? Like a, a bunch of dumpster fires. Oh, dumpster fires. <laughs> I love that you still call it dumpster. Instead of a tip? No, instead of a bin. rubbish bin. Rubbish bin, right. Yeah. Dumpster fire is kind of a, a term, though. It's kind of implying when everything goes to crap. So it's an American thing? I think so. Yeah, it must be. And you'd know what a dumpster is, right? Yeah. I mean, like it's a, yeah. not you specifically, but <laughs> but it is a term that Australians would recognize. So just more of this stuff coming out. stuff out. Yeah. I don't know. No. So that may be a branch of the facial nerve it. there. Yeah. So that explains why yeah. this dog has been having issues. Fia is saying that it reminds her of maggots because we've had a maggoty week. <laughs> Certainly the um, most rewarding part about having the YouTube channel has been the relationships and comments that I get from people. Um, and friendships I've made and people coming to visit because of the YouTube channel. And I had one vet from India who came I'm sure I've told this story before, um, who came and when he arrived, he had gone onto our website and memorized the names of all of our nurses so that he could address everybody by name. And I asked him, at one point I said, do you have ligature? And he said, um, if you have it, I have it. I've designed my hospital to match yours from your tour. And so he's got now he's got three huge hospitals. All of them are based on my practice. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And he's doing spinal surgeries and stuff that he wasn't able to do, and has just done them from watching. In uh, he's in uh, Bangalore. I would be done by now if it were a normal one. There's just no dissection plane here. It's just this big mass. I don't know if you guys can see there and appreciate the size of the mass in here. This is the point at which I wish I could call in the B team <laughs> and say, I'm done. <laughs> Next. And I am just very grateful that I'm not trying to protect the facial nerve. 
in all of this because it would be impossible. Can you just give me some pressure down Can there? Can you retouch the taste details? Uh, the other ear is unaffected. The other ear is unaffected, that's correct. And so this dog just presented with severe otitis externa. Complete stenosis of the ear canal and it's this weird kind of caseated stuff that we're getting out of here. And I can't say that I've seen this before. Okay, so that's getting into more normal tissue here. I thought my spinal cord tumor was going to be my hard surgery today. You haven't seen one like this, have you? Worry that this thickened stuff is actually attached to the skull. I think I'm getting my fingers underneath it a little bit at least. Can I get Cotter turned up to 40, please? I can feel the ramus of the mandible right here. I think I'm going to come in with my mayos and just try to bluntly dissect through here, which I would never do if the facial nerve was intact. So that's zygomatic arch coming in right there. Do you feel that, Juliana? Yeah. Okay, so tells us that we're in the right neighborhood. So that's Bulla down there.
big bladder there. Okay. Let's, um, all right, so what we need to do is get a section going on here. Can I get a hammer stop, please? We haven't lost really any blood. Yet. All right, so let's get suction in there, please. Very good. bleeding around it. What's that? No. All good. Ear canal right there. So that's the bulla. I'm just going to keep some pressure on there for a little while and hopefully slow down the bleeding. What's our plan B here? <laughs> Have you got your finger holding it? Yeah. Oh, God. I'll just give it five minutes to start with. figure out what the feeder vessel is that's going into that so that I can try to ligate it. It's going to be a branch of the carotid artery. Let's see if I can get a guilty around my finger. So that I might have a better chance of seeing what's going on here. Mm -hmm. 
I can feel something pulsing underneath my finger. And I may be better off actually blindly clamping it. Yep. I can feel it pulsing under my finger here. And when I do anything to relieve pressure on it, it just starts gushing. When the anatomy is so disrupted, I get some more large hemostats. Like just bigger than this, please. Thank you. Uh, doesn't matter. Uh, curved would be great, I think. Okay, so that's better. Okay, so hold on to that, please. Okay, so I've got this huge artery kind of trapped in here. Can I please get um, Ligashore? Thank you. So I can just see that the open end of the carotid artery. You know what? I might try hemoclips. Yeah, I'll take that as well. And then I'll get some hemoclips. What uh, size? Mm, kind of a small. Yeah. yeah. See if I can get a proper uh, I know how to load those. Thank you. Ligasure plugged in. That's right, that's too small anyway, I think. All right, so, can I get suction, please? to get this out of the way for me. Just hold on to that, please.
just gonna release this. And we're okay there. And okay, so we can just see that pulsing away there. So I really don't think we lost much blood. No. I think we could hear it. We could <laughs> but, see it. But, um, yeah. All right, so now we can get back to our get the surgery. Crap out of us. Uh, that's that bullet stuff. All right, so now I can see the okay. bulla better than you Sorry. usually can. And I don't know how to relay this or to emphasize it, but when you're in a situation like that, you really just have to kind of keep your cool and come up with a solution. So I'm just cleaning off the bullet here. So losing your cool and throwing instruments and yelling and stuff certainly doesn't do any good. Okay, so now I'm looking at the bottom of the bullet there. I'm just gonna keep that packed off here a little bit better. I think knowing the anatomy of the area is helpful as well because I knew the direction that that artery would be running. Keep suctioning for me, please. Yeah, just in there. So now I'm doing my bullet osteotomy. We might be a little bit light, just be aware. Yep. Yeah. So the alpha 2 is wearing off. Did you save your needle? No, I did not. That's so great. the bulla is not as bad as I would have imagined. Okay. So I don't know if you guys can see down in there. Um, so we'll change over to a smaller. So the lining is actually not that thick. So it's still light. Yep. So I've got a big plug of um, of lining. I'm looking for my little curette, but that might just be in a neuro kit. You found another one? Yeah, that's perfect. Being careful with the vestibular recess here. Plugs of material here. Yeah. 
And um, see, what did you guys do? You did a fluid bolus. How much? Uh, just a 10 mil per kilo. So uh, 10 mil per kilo bolus. Yeah. Estimated blood loss would have been, let's say, 200 mils, something like that, 300. So 150 mils. And so to replace that would be about a 450 mil bolus. So we've given, it's actually had a couple of boluses before, but yeah. it's a party. Um, so... Do we have a stava? Oh, here we go. No. We did another bolus, and now we're on transexamic acid. Wow. So we're giving transexamic acid, yeah. which is a, to prevent or reduce fibrinolysis. Yep, yeah. and also to help clot the clot. Yeah, stabilize the clot. Yeah. And it, and it stabilizes the clot by preventing fibrinolysis. Yep. So whenever you have a clot that forms in the body, you always have um, combating processes of forming clots and breaking down clots. And so by giving tranexamic acid, we're reducing the fibrinolysis part of the equation. So that's the vestibular recess up in there, so I just have to stay out of there. Um, so you would have turned off the anesthetic or turned down the anesthetic? Turned down the anesthetic. Yeah. Yeah. So I gave metadomidine as well. Mm -hmm. And um, because whenever you have hemorrhage like that, you want to decrease the level of the systemic uh, anesthetic so that you have less effective hypertension. And so then we had to give something to keep it asleep as well. taking my time here. Now we've got all the bleeding under control and stuff. We don't want to leave the material in here. It's going to abscess later on. Flush, please. And get some um, buprivacaine, please. Buprivacaine, please. I assume you guys can see at least some of the white down in the bottom of the bulla. Now, Georgie did do the block prayer. 
Oh, oh great. Okay, Sorry. so we don't need that. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, so our anesthetist has done a block preoperatively. Just want to have a look at these vessels. See if there's anything else that I want to do with them. I mean, the ligature should be fine. Yeah, we'll do that in the ear canal. So just stick a culture at in the bottom. There, there's basically just no canal here. So that's what was on the bottom. So there's no, there's no lumen down here. All right, so I'll just jam this in, in here. Oh, there's the lumen there. So that's the lumen right there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Can I please have some of the good gel foam? Good gel foam? Yeah, the co collagen. No. I'm going to get a big chunk in there and just make like a tamponade just to support clot formation around that big vessel. Please get some 2 PDS. So that was so lucky that I was be able to be able to clamp the vessel fore and aft to give us a chance to see the transected lumen. While it's helpful, the suture does less good in your hand. <laughs> Sorry. to get yep. dead um, space to close here. We are on PSA, yeah? Yep. Um, that's going twenty micrograms over twenty minutes. We had metatomidine oh, Um you know what, can I get a Jackson Pratt please? Uh, yeah, the reason why I'm doing a Jackson Pratt in here is to monitor hemorrhage. And also, if it bleeds, I don't want it constricting the pharynx in the airway. Um, and um, We're occluding so the pharynx in the airway. Um, 
So again, the reason why I'm draining this is not because of seroma formation. It's that if it does hemorrhage and starts bleeding, I want to be able to, number one, be able to monitor that and know that that's happened, and number two, prevent uh, a hematoma that could occlude the airway or the pharynx back there. We've done one. Oh, you know, I've done the same one. Oh, I just said it. No, 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 yeah, 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 sorry, but I haven't, like, like, oh, okay, yeah. yeah. That's the front, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm not even going to go. All right, now. So, sorry. Can you throw me in the antibiotic, and then I should be good? Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is this just from the ear canal or from yeah, the ear canal? Yeah, the ear canal. And the ear canal is on the face. And you'll take that Jackson Pratt, please. So what we'll do is we'll make a little stab back here. We'll get a hemostat, pass it underneath the skin, and then we'll get the end of the drain. Uh, that guy there. And then we're going to have to cut that off in part because it's too much foreign material in there. We have to position it in a way that's not going to occlude the drain. Are you happy for me to give this all in that house? Yes, ma'am. Give another two of PDS, please. Be careful not to suture this drain in. It'll make it very difficult to get back out. <laughs> Yes, please. And then one tonight? Yeah, tonight. maybe at midnight. So not, so one now and then just one at midnight? midnight. Yep. Yeah. Do we have the Jackson Pratt bulb already? Yeah, would you like a hand uh, Yep. Yeah. Yeah.
for a second. Let me just grab my suture. So we'll need to make sure that we do simple continuous along here to make sure that we create a seal so that the Jackson Pratt will work. Yeah. And then a finger snare up there. Okay. Okay, you happy with that? Yep. All right. So that was a bit trickier than we anticipated. Um, but um, we got there in the end. So total ear canal ablation hit the internal carotid artery because of the uh, abnormal anatomy. Uh, cut that, uh, transected it. And so use my finger in order to um, just stem the bleeding and then I was able to palpate the direction that that artery was running and so then once I uh, what I did then was hemostat it above and below that artery so that then we could stop the bleeding and I could see the opening of the lumen and then I uh, hemo or, um, ligasured that artery in three different places so if you haven't already done so please subscribe to our channel make sure you turn on notifications so you'll get a ding on your phone.